And welcome back to a fresh episode of the Business Growth Show. I'm your host, Sam Dunning, co-owner over at webchoiceuk.com. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to our weekly email where we share actionable marketing, marketing tips, useful podcasts, free guides and resources. You can check that out today over at businessgrowth.email. And with that, my guest today is Ethan Parker. Ethan is the VP of Revenue over at Ulti Sales. He's also head of outbound squad a program for individual sellers looking to get their phd in sales very warm welcome to the show ethan how are you doing i'm doing well thanks for having me sam how are you yeah all good on this side man looking forward to this it's gonna be a juicy conversation we'll be chatting all about how you should approach your inbound lead versus an outbound ice cold not ready for your cool prospect so it should uh should be a good one to unpack should hopefully share some some nice actionable tips for everyone that's tuning in so i guess let's let's throw you under under a bus as i do with most of my guests on the first question should we do be focusing on inbound should we be focusing on outbound should we be doing both what's your thoughts ethan yeah i i think that the the best approach is is always you know do both um so i think there's some important distinctions to make on you know what's considered outbound what's considered inbound and and really like the buckets in between right um so you know and it depends on the size of the organization as far as how they might classify that but you know having a inbound engine running that is generating leads for you i would consider an inbound lead folks that say hey i'd like some more information or i'd like a demo or contact me I'd, i'd like to hear more about this that would be a hot inbound lead and then we're going to have, you know, probably some content marketing going out there where we're providing some value. That could be, you know, uh, I used to own a few gyms. If so that could be okay. a video about how to do a proper workout, that could be a video on how to get in shape for summer. Maybe you're giving away a 30 day guide of this. The people that download that, they're not necessarily interested in in your business. They were interested in the content piece, right? So that would kind of be in a bucket in between. I'd like to call those warm outbound in that they do have some awareness. We provided some value, but they didn't necessarily say, hey, I'm interested in, in your business. And then we have, you know, the the option of the spectrum totally cold outbound in that, you know, they haven't expressed any interest. There's no intent signals and and they just look like a good fit for us. And the short answer is um, if the price point of your business makes sense, you should 100% be doing all of the above. If you have a very highly transactional sale and it's very low cost, the debate of whether outbound makes sense or not would come into play. And that would just kind of be a case by case situation. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's one of those tricky debates, right? Because there's plenty of businesses that rely on outbound on inbound. Sorry. So they might be doing kind of paid advertising. They might be providing free content. Like you mentioned, they might be doing a mix of things like social ads, Google ads, social media, organic stuff, driving that inbound, building that demand gen platform. And then perhaps their sales team are just purely working off leads that come direct. And then likewise, they might be putting out content, getting what we call marketing qualified leads. If people are putting out like free guides or video guides where people put their name and email, and then those lead a lot, lot more nurturing to then become a warmer prospect to then put through your sales funnel to leads. And then likewise, on the flip side, they might be just doing ice cold calling, generating prospects in that way and um, booking initial meetings and putting them through the sales process there. So I guess the best way to to take this firstly is maybe we can share some best practices around kind of warmer leads whether we want to talk about kind of perhaps someone that's downloaded a piece of content and how we should approach that and then we could talk about kind of real hot leads where people actually raising their hand look i want to speak to sales i want to have a consultation here and now um and what what perhaps the differences are and some best practices that you've utilize when you run a business and now Ethan that you can share with our, our listeners and watchers. Yeah, great question. Um so let's let's tackle the MQL piece first. So MQL, you know, we're all in agreement here. It's you're gonna be someone that has, you know, expressed some sort of intent, engaged with some content you provided, um, usually a value based content, a webinar, a white paper download, case study, something of that nature. So these people 
oftentimes what businesses typically do is they'll, they'll put that in because you know, marketing is like, Oh, we have all these great leads and sales is like, no, your leads are <laughs> shit. Right. <laughs> yep. and it's, it's this never ending battle. And I was just in a meeting like this yesterday with marketing and the sales leaders and the, and marketing is like, no, all the leads we send you are going to be good. They've gone through our filtration. They meet our ICP. We want you to call all of them. And sales is like, well, hold up a minute. I don't want to be on meetings with you know people that, that don't make sense. Um, so let's assume these are all folks that make sense for you. And we're going to reach out. The mistake that gets made is, you know, you have, you have a sales rep that reached out and says something like, you know, Hey, Sam, it's Ethan Parker over at ABC company. Uh, I was giving you a call because you downloaded our white paper on this, that, and the other. And I was hoping to see if you might be open to speaking sometime next week about log management. Right. <laughs> um, and, and they're like, what? And they may not even remember the white paper they downloaded because it probably wasn't about your company and the thing that sure. you do. It was, probably related in some way. Um, so for those folks, MQLs, the scripting that works really well, that converts well, is going to be very similar to what you might say in an outbound motion. So for example, at Alti Sales, we, we do this for clients. We handle their MQLs as well as you know generate outbound interest. Um, for the folks that fall in the MQL bucket, we use almost the same script. There's a few questions at the end that are a little bit different that are more a little bit more of like qualifying questions, but okay. the top of the script is very similar. So it would be a permission-based opener and then say, hey, great, Sam, well, appreciate your time. Uh, the reason why I'm giving you a call is because we're hosting some brief personalized screen shares on how companies like Nike and Cisco have been um, increasing their developer happiness, blah, 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 blah. We're going to risk out a couple of priorities, a couple of outcomes that they're working on. And I'm going to say, I just have two quick questions to see if this is relevant for you. And then I'll ask them a couple of questions that will, you know, bleed into more of what we're talking about, as well as qualify them a bit and see where they're at and make sure it makes sense. And then I'll say, hey, ma'am, well, uh, based on what you're telling me today and what you're trying to do, I think that we might be able to, uh, be able to help you out here. You know, would you be open to speak with me sometime next week when I'm not totally calling you out of the blue here? So it's it's a very similar interaction as a as an outbound lead because the only difference is they probably... I say it's about 50, 50. They at least know the name of your company instead of it yep. being like totally cold. That's about the only difference though. <laughs> yeah. 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 I get that. So I, I think that's a common misconception is that when you put out a webinar, when you put out some kind of educational content, whether it's an ebook, webinar, podcast guide, whatever it is to get that hook, usually a name and an email in return for the, the data. I think a lot of companies approach it. Like you say, that it is a, a warm lead. It is someone that speaks to sales and marketing might pass it off to sales and think like, here you go, guys, there's a hundred hot leads. Let's, uh, let's get some sales on the, on the board. And in, in reality, like you say, you're calling these leads and they may never, never remember they downloaded the piece of content. They might not even remember your brand name. So should we mention Ethan that, Hey, you, you downloaded X, Y, Z, or should that not even be discussed? Should you just jump straight into, look, this, uh, like you said, a permission-based open that might be like, this is a sales call. Can I get 27 seconds to explain why I'm calling or whatever that opener is? Do you need to mention the, the guide or whatever they downloaded? I don't. Um, okay. Unless it's a very specific situation. And for example, if it was a webinar that was very much about what we do and you have tracking to see they stayed for the whole thing. So not just registered, not came in and bounced, but they stayed for the whole thing. Um, there's some, some crazy software out there that has even more in-depth tracking of that. So depending on what you have available there, that's about the only situation where I would bring it up. If it was a white paper download or anything of that, I'm not really going to mention it. I've seen on average a bigger pushback, like it just distracts them because they may not even remember the download. They may not even remember exactly what the brand was. And so you calling and saying, Hey, I'm giving you a call because you did this. Like, where do you take that call from there? If you try to transition into more of a general script to provide value. It's kind of like a weird transition and, and they're hung up on this. Wait, what, what did that download? Why are you calling me versus just hitting them with the permission based opener? Hey, right. Sam, it's Ethan Parker. I, I know I probably caught you in the middle of something. You yeah, have a minute, you know, um, that's, we're talking about what we want to talk about versus inserting this variable that is, it's very much a roll the dice, whether they really remember that, whether it was super valuable or not. <laughs> You know, all sorts of things come into play there. Um, so I don't I don't like mentioning it, no. Yeah. And are, on that note, Ethan, are there any other super no-nos that you should not do with these marketing qualified leads? Any things to definitely avoid when you are making those initial calls to them? 
Yeah, I, I think we're we're beating around the bush on some of the some of the things that I'm about to say, but we shouldn't sure. assume that they're interested in a meeting. Um, okay. So the no nos are this doesn't change the fact that we're not going to pitch. Hopefully, everyone listening to this is um, in the vein of on a cold call we don't pitch, right? It's talking about what the prospect cares about, generating some curiosity and, and booking a meeting, having a conversation. The the principle is the same with these MQLs. It, it, it does not change. We need to not assume they want to chat to sales. We need to assume they probably don't know who we are. They might remember the name, but we need to talk about what they care about. So big no-nos there is, is trying to go straight for that meeting. And hey, giving you a call because you downloaded this. Just want to see if you might be willing to speak with our sales team sometime next week. Like that's a big no-no. Um, the same on email. I think people do this more via email than they do on the phone. They might mention that download and then right. their CTA is something like, Hey, you are you available next Tuesday? I think that's a no, no as well. We need to, we need to show them what value they're going to get out of that meeting, why it's worth their time. So, Hey, would you be interested to see how some other folks, let's say we're calling Nike. Would you other, would you be, um, you know, uh, interested to see how some other folks like Adidas have recently like three X there, um, product development uh, or you know product release timeline or whatever it might be depending on what you're selling right we still need to show some value and so don't don't just go in for the meeting yep yep so some kind of value proposition that they can spark i guess you can spark interest with like you say if it is a some kind of slideshow or video that you're sharing or useful piece of content to keep them hooked um we'll dive back into that in a sec just want to throw you off a bit ethan so we, we're talking about calling these these prospects i know a heck of a lot of let's say larger scale maybe software as a service companies not necessarily but a lot of software companies do this they'll get a whole bunch of these marketing qualified leads that have downloaded some kind of information content and then they won't always ship them off to sales to call or perhaps they'll give some to sales perhaps some of them will nurture them via email for a while until they're up to a point of raising their hand for a demo or raising their hand saying we're ready to speak to sales what's your opinion on the best way to tackle these do you think there is a right way do you think it is the the job of the sales team to just cool them and try and warm them up and see if any of them are a good fit for the next stage of the sales process yeah i think this again would the variable here would be like what's the what's the acv of what we're selling if yep if this is an average contract value of 100k plus then 100 percent it should go to the sales team if it's a 10k per year deal then I as a seller wouldn't want to be spending my time. I would rather go after cold, like one ICPs that I know are going to be those larger deals that are going to be worth that time spent and let marketing work the MQLs to generate like a little bit higher scoring. Usually that's what the relationship looks like that generally marketing is going to have some type of lead scoring and they nurture them, as you mentioned, with some more emails, some more content, some more value to get them up to a certain point and then pass off to sales. Whether that's the right or wrong way, um, I don't know that I can answer that, Sam, but what, what I do believe is if, if the value is high ticket enough, then I think it makes sense to have, you know, shift that over to your sellers to let them work those leads. And I think that there's no more powerful way in the world than picking up the phone and calling someone to, to generate, you know, a conversation to see if this makes sense. Cause that, that just nips all that in the bud. If we can have one five minute conversation, we just accelerate this timeline so fast or DQ you and we'll stop bugging you. Yeah, I think what you're saying makes sense. I mean, there's no point in wasting your company's time, your seller's time, if they are quite low average order value deals, right? And you're you're perhaps putting people through this qualifi qualification process and perhaps it can be automated because your software is only a few hundred dollars a month. So it doesn't doesn't add up to do all this, this work when you could just automate it. Likewise, like you said, if you've got a higher ticket order value, 10K, 20K, 100K plus, then this... This makes a lot more sense. So, yeah, I think you laid, we're laying down quite a nice framework on how to approach these type of leads. And you, you're mentioning kind of gener generating curiosity, perhaps asking a couple qualification questions, showing what the value prop might be, what they actually get out of it. Um, and then it's just the next step to see if they're, they're open to it and then like booking an initial meeting or whatever that next step is. Yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, we can drill in on the, cause the, the part people struggle with is, you know, maybe they have a really good opener and it gets people interested, but then they don't know where to take the call next or the okay. questions are kind of, uh, you know, shitty for lack of a better words, what happens next after that pitch. Sure. So the, the kind of, the kind of general framework of 
if you're, whether it's MQL or cold outbound of after we kind of make our initial statement, which would be something like, Hey, we're showing how other folks like this person and that person are doing X, Y, Z. And I just have two quick questions, see if that's relevant for you. And they say, sure, what you got. And then I would, I'm going to ask a, I'm going to try to like understand where they are in the journey to excellence because that's really what we should be selling on the first call that's what we should be doing in discovery it should be you know discovery and gaining some information and we should be showing hey this is what world-class orgs are doing and this is what their journey to excellence look like and we need to understand where they're at and by the end of that call hopefully they understand how we help them leapfrog to the end of that process but on the cold call it's very similar so we're going to make a context statement and then ask a how-based question first. So that would be something like, let's pretend that we're, I'll just go with a reference from one of my past companies. I sold a MarTech tool to insurance orgs. And the problem it was solving was that most of these really massive insurance orgs, they have agents and brokers that are very spread out. And they are like doing really old fashioned things for marketing. Like they go onto a portal and download a PDF. That's like the same thing. Everyone, they get it printed and it's flyers or they have this like weird email newspaper ad. Like they do really old fashioned stuff yep. because they have such strict compliance and branding rules. So they can't, they're afraid to let their agents like modify things too much. So gotcha. what our product did was bridge that gap. It allows the, it's a digital form of that where, you know, the corporate office can lock down things, let them change the things that are allowed, et cetera. So a question I might ask after that opener would be, Hey, well, thanks, Sam. Uh, typically what, what other VPs of marketing at, in places like, like Hub International and Alira, what, what they're telling me is um, they really want their agents and brokers to like do more to be like the local marketing arm in their areas. But uh, they typically don't have a whole lot of resources for them to do many digital advertisements. Most of the resources are limited to um, flyers, direct mailers, newspaper ads. Uh, I'm curious, is that what you guys have going on or do you have something more advanced? Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to paint the picture. So let them know I really understand their world and what's going on. And then I'll yep. ask a question and you'll get a much better answer to that question now with that context. And I'm not a fan of open-ended questions. Like I actually think that's like the biggest load of horse shit that people throw around in sales. Like, <laughs> I want to be very strategic with my questions around a specific thing. So yep. it's a very specific question. And then you'll do that two times. And then you'll simply back up off and like, hey, Sam, based on what you're telling me here, I think we might be able to help you with some of these things that you're working on. Would you be open to unpacking this with me sometime next week when I'm not like totally calling you out of the blue here? At any point, I'm not going to mention the company. I don't even say the company in my opener. I just use my first and last name. But that's the general framework. I like that. Yeah. So you're you're going by common problems that you see when you talk to prospects being very specific in I guess what some of your best customers have come to you with the problems that you've helped them overcome and seeing if any of that resonates with this potential customer and if if it does then pushing for the next step and I suppose if they push back and say look there's something we've got covered or completely irrelevant or whatever that may be then you disregard the lead or is there a few other things we need to consider first yeah, we're, we're never going to take the first no. So we're always going to, I don't like the term handle objections. I'm not a fan. Uh, what Jason and I and Outbound Squad talk about is deflating those objections. So if you imagine a hot air, you know, you're, you're blowing a balloon up. The more we give rebuttals and try to handle the objection, the bigger and bigger that balloon gets and the more pressure there is, the more uncomfortable it is. What we want to do is deflate it. We want to take that pressure out of the room. And the way we do that is framework called EVA. So it's empathize, validate, make an offer. So you say, hey, we're all covered. This is really kind of irrelevant for me. Hey, got it, Sam. Uh, sounds like you're all set. That's validation. I can imagine how, you know, talking to a salesperson about something like this, whenever, you know, you kind of got everything all taken care of might feel like a waste of time. That's yep. empathy. And then I say, hey, would it be a terrible idea just because I have heard, you know, some things like that from previous uh, folks I spoke to. Could I just ask you two quick questions and then I'll, I'll leave you alone if this doesn't make sense. Um, right. So empathize, validate, make an offer. And most of the time they're going to say, sure. And then I can poke holes in it because it depends on, it depends on the product. Right. But in, in my scenario, I definitely heard that, but that usually is going to mean, Hey, they're using seismic. They're using like, I, I pretty much know what that meant they were using. And I know the limitations there. And I know they're still, uh, this is not a rip and replace. This is in combination too. And I know the value. So then I can ask a couple other questions. So, Hey, great. Typically when folks say that it's because they're using X, Y, Z. And again, I'm showing my acumen of knowing that like, damn, this dude knows what's going on. And then, and it's because I've had these conversations with customers 
And then I'm going to undo the same thing I did in the previous question. So typically when that's the scenario, these things happen. Are you ever running into that or you're all set on that? And if, you know, if we go through a couple of those rounds of them saying that we got this covered and it's not a problem, then cool. You know, well, yeah. appreciate your time and let it go. Yeah, that's that's a solid framework. It sounds like you're, you're trying to dig a bit deeper using your experience in the in the field, in the sector to understand if if it is a genuine objection or if it is just a blanket no, because obviously you're calling this person from out of the blue. They might not really want to talk to you, but once I suppose you get across that industry expertise, you appreciate that they're they're taking the time to chat to you and you break that down a bit. It, it kind of, I suppose it takes them off guard a bit more. Yeah, well, because they're expecting a pitch. And like when you tell me, it's just like when someone responds to an email, they say not interested. And I'm like, well, not interested in what? Because I haven't pitched you anything. <laughs> You just, yeah. you just don't want a salesperson contacting you. It's the same thing on the phone. They, they're they just like, ah, nah, we're all set. It's because they, they don't want to be sold to. And they don't want to, like, they, this has interrupted their day. But they did choose to answer the phone. And if you handle it in a respectful way with empathy, you can you can work through those. And you get to a place of now they do understand what you're saying. And there is alignment. Or you've tried your best. And there's no alignment. And this does, it's not a good fit. And that's okay, too. And I would say in those scenarios, make sure you flag the contact is not a good fit, not the company. Because just because one human being at a company says, this doesn't make sense, doesn't mean that's how everyone feels. Yeah, yeah, nice ad. Nice ad, especially for larger, larger organizations where the chances are you might speak to someone different each time. Um, or like you say, there's different, I've had, had the same. Even when um, kind of doing sponsorship for the podcast, it could be that one person in the company is completely against it speak to someone else in the marketing department, they're all for it. So, yeah. yeah, like, oh, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing how that can work. Cool. So that's kind of more marketing qualified leads, someone that's downloaded a piece of content, you call them up, get in touch with them. And I, I think that li links quite into the outbound. But before we get into the outbound and a bit more structure, let's talk about perhaps someone that's landed on your website or a landing page. And they've clicked that big speak to sales button or that big get in, get in touch, um, book a demo button filled out the inquiry form. What are some, some best practices around speaking to these people that have actually raised their hand and said they want to speak to sales? Yeah. Speed is so, so impressive to the, the customer. And I know so many organizations that have like a 24 hour response time to a demo request. Like that's absurd. So number one, I would highly suggest having something like a chili piper or something like that where they can just book it and they don't have to wait for someone to reach out. Like that's what I look for. I hate it when I have to wait for someone to call me just to book a meeting. That would be my first bit of advice. Have it, have them be able to, to book it right there on the site. Um, if they do not book and they request a contact, that probably means that they have some questions um, before they want to sit on a demo. And when we think about the buyer's journey and where they're at when they come into a, hey, I'd like a demo or, hey, I'd like some more information, um, that means they're either in consideration or evaluation phase, most likely. So they're either currently, they, they're problem aware and they're currently like investigating like how they could even begin to go solve it or they're problem aware and they've kind of already decided on a route they want to go solve it and there's a team assigned to it and now they're just evaluating vendors. And so they, you know, sometimes might have some um, like, like a spreadsheet where they're checking boxes. Like that's how it's going to be if it's a larger organization, if it's smaller, maybe not, but um, so what we don't want to do is we don't want to reach out to them and try to get into that box ticking conversation right there. We want to get them into that, into that call where we can take them on that journey and we can show them the value there. Um, so what I would highly suggest doing is have some stuff ready, like some basic questions. So for example, if you know, they're going to ask, um, Hey, I'm curious how you guys handle this. I'm sure every company will know the kind of top two or three things that people tend to ask about how your product works in relation to something. I would have a canned response there that doesn't get too deep into the weeds, talks more about the outcomes. You can drive with those things with simple, like, yes, we could do that. Folks are using that to do X, Y, Z. So are you available on Tuesday or Thursday next week? Like we just need to, that, that call is much simpler. Hey, Sam, it's Ethan Parker over at Alti Sales giving you a call because you requested a, a demo. So I wanted to re reach back out to you really quickly here and, and get that set up for you. Are you available next Tuesday or Thursday? Um, so if you do that within five, 10 minutes of that lead coming in, it's going to be a very high success rate. So I think speed 
and um, low amount of friction as possible for the customer is what you're shooting for there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Um, and I've experienced that as well, right? Like, definitely agree with speed to lead. It's certainly helped us at Web Choice in terms of landing deals and being quick to respond to inquiries. It just goes without saying, right? If you're leaving, if you've made an inquiry as a prospect, just think how you'd like to be treated. If you inquired at, say, 8 a.m. and a prospect didn't get back to you until the next day, I mean, a, a vendor, sorry, didn't get back to you till the next day, but then another vendor you inquired with got back within five minutes. Who's leaving the best first impression? Um, it's a no-brainer. And with that said, that's an interesting point you raised, Ethan. So I've, because I handle a lot of the leads that come in for, for our company, Web Choice, quite a lot of the time, and I'm sure business owners, marketers tuning in have probably experienced this, is that the prospect might try and take a handle of the conversation. So before you even have a chance to run through kind of your qualifying questions to see if this lead is a good fit to take to the next step, if that is showing them a demo straight away, if that's showing me software, giving them a slideshow, whatever that step is, depending on the size of your product and your sales process, they might say, look, I, I want to know kind of what the size of your company is, what your pricing is, what your timeframes are, what availability you've got. And then before you know it, they're reeling off 100 questions and you're just bombarded with them. And you're just being like a robot saying, yes, we were formed in 1982. We have 100 members of staff and stuff like that, which is, from my experience, one of the worst ways that a, a lead can go. Um, any ways or best practice of you, find Ethan, to kind of turn the conversation around, not make the lead feel like you're trying to run the show, but you are, um, and flipping it around so you, you can kind of grab a hold of the conversation and make sure you, you kind of take it to where you, where you need to, to see if this person is a good fit to do some business. Yeah, there's a very useful discovery tactic that you can use in this situation. And I forget where I heard this. So for whoever's original IP this is, I, uh, <laughs> it's not mine. So wherever credit is due. But it's called uh, tagging, right? So if someone asks me, if we get on the phone with that prospect, and you're right, we're going to have that some percentage of the time where they just... Every time they ask a question, what we want to do and the way that we regain control without it really feeling that way is we do answer the question, but we just tag a question on the end of it that will steer this conversation back where we want. So let's pretend again, um, just make up a random scenario. Hey, um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious about, um, you know, if your guys' feature integrates with HubSpot or blah, 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 whatever. It might be a question sure. about that. So the answer to a question like that is going to be, uh, the short answer, Sam, is yeah, we can. However, yeah, I do just want to be honest with you. I am not the technical expert on our on our uh, on our uh, team, and the reason I was giving you a call is so I can make sure and get you in touch with the person that can like thoroughly answer that question. But but um, yes, is the answer. Question for you, Sam. Typically, when folks ask that, it's because they're concerned about the visibility into blah 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 blah. Is that kind of you bring that up? Like we are, again, we're demonstrating the acumen and we're going to the thing behind the question. Now they're answering our questions. When they answer it, I'm going to ask my next one. And they're yep. probably going to use the tagging method because <laughs> they're not a seller and they're not thinking about it. So if you tag a question to the end of your answer, it puts you back in the seat of control without it really feeling that way because you did answer it. And I would suggest like, your salespeople that are making these calls, like they don't, they shouldn't be the product expert. And if it is you, Sam, that you're saying, like I deal with a lot of these here, you probably are the product expert. Then it would become more about time. So like, Hey, um, that's a really loaded question there, Sam. The short answer is yes, but I do have a meeting coming up here in two minutes. So like, I actually don't have time to dive into that, but let's get something on the calendar. I can totally unpack that with you. Right. So I think they're just like when you're on outbound and trying to create this peer to peer environment, it's the same thing with inbound. Like we need, we need the client to understand that, you know, I'm your peer and you know, I'm not just an order taker here. Yeah. 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 What, what would be, um, in your opinion, Ethan, what's the main objective? Cause we said with the, the MQL with let's say a semi warm, semi cold content driven lead. One of the main goals is to kind of build build that curiosity, actually see if they're interested in taking the next step, whether that is a demo or slideshow, or whatever we want to kind of drive them to. What would you say is the main goal when you're talking to a, a real hot inbound lead that's someone that's actually requested to speak to sales in your thoughts? Yeah, I think the the main goal is to provide an an outstanding experience. Like 
in in the example that you gave, if I submit a demo in at 8 a.m. and one company takes 24 hours to get back to me and one takes 10 minutes, who's getting off on the right foot faster? So I think that the the prospect or customer experience is like uber, uber important and like really what it boils down to unless you have some really innovative thing. But like if it's outreach and sales loft, somebody might say they picked outreach because they have better analytics. But why they really picked outreach was because they had a better experience. The salesperson was faster getting back to them. The support was better than whatever the case may be. And I'm not saying that it is. So for all you sales, I'm a sales loft user. So I'm not... I'm not uh, not shitting on either one, but it, it, when it's when it's a similar thing, it comes down to the experience. So I think that should be the ultimate goal. Is like I need to I need to I need to have a really great conversation, build good rapport, and make sure this is a good fit for us. Pick out some landmines that typically come up, get them aware. I'm planting the seeds so that the my next conversation will be very very productive, very relevant, and very focused on what they want to talk about. So I think it's like light discovery really um, is the, is the primary goal and the client experience is, you know, that should be top of mind. Yeah. 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 I like it. We, we had an interesting conversation with a chap called Benjamin Dennehy. So we're at the moment, we're diving into kind of top level overviews of outbound leads, inbound leads. So if you do want to get a more detailed conversation around how, how to handle inbound lead, check out the business growth show episode with Benjamin Dennehy, which was filmed and recorded sometime last year that's worth your time so let's transition to the final section of the show in terms of outbound we might have touched on some of this with the with the mqr leads but let's to to wrap things up what should be our initial thought process when we're dealing with ice cold prospects perhaps this is a list that marketing generated perhaps we purchased it from a third party list vendor perhaps we plucked them off linkedin sales navigator or maybe we've just made a, a list ourselves um what are some of the the thoughts and your recommendations there, Ethan. Yeah. Number one is everything that you do, every email that you send, every call that you make, the goal is to start a conversation. Um, from that conversation, if the conversation goes well, then we can set up a meeting where we can talk about this a bit more. So that's the number one. I'm a, f I don't want to be like another mindset guy here, but like it is so much everything in sales and how you go into a conversation, what beliefs you have and what your agenda is are going to impact how you say the things that you say and how you're perceived. Like it's, there's 90% of human communication is nonverbal. So like your intent going in needs to be on point. And the intent here is to help and to start a conversation. That should be your intent. And if it is, you're going to start a conversation and the framework is the exact same that you'd use with the MQL. It's the exact same, no different. I'm going to use permission-based opener. I'm going to have a value-based pitch around what information we have that we can share with you that will possibly help you in your business. And um, I'm a fan of the priority drop method. So I'm going to list three things. So like, Hey, Sam, most folks like you, I talk to are focused on one of three things right now. Bah, bah, bah. Each of those is going to be an overarching category with specific context behind it. And so to build on the scenario I gave, I might say most of VP of marketing is like you. I speak to are highly focused on one of three things right now, Sam. One is demand gen. So how can we get more of our agents and brokers involved in our digital local presence and driving more leads? So it's going to be tailored to the specific industry and person I'm talking to. And I'll list off two more and I'll say, hey, curious, which of these is a focus for you right now? If they say none, then we're done. <laughs> If they say, um, which if you've done your research, they're probably going to say all of them or give you one. And we're going to go down that same pattern. Oh, great. Well, typically what I hear when folks are looking at that, they're typically doing things like X and Y. Are you doing something like that? Or do you have something more advanced going on? And then after we kind of ask them to understanding where they're at in the journey, we're going to ask uh, like a why based question in the form of what. So you don't want to use the word why, except in certain in certain scenarios, because it makes people defensive. And you really only want them defensive when they're defending the purchase of your product. So early in this stage, we're going to ask it in a what-based way. So instead of, hey, why are you looking at that? It would be like, hey, curious, Sam, what's driving that to be an area of focus right now? And then we'll get to a little bit higher thing. Well, we need to we need to increase our lead production by 40% in 2022. That's the, like the agenda. Hey, got it, Sam. That's what I figured. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Based on what you're telling me here, man, I, I think that we might be able to help you with those lead gen goals 2022. Um, my goal here wasn't to take up too much of your time today. Would you be open to unpacking this with me a bit more sometime next week when I'm not like totally calling you out of the blue? So the framework's the exact same. We're going to priority drop, a couple how-based questions, then a why in the form of a what-based, and set the meeting. Yep, yep, yep. Build up that curiosity, digging deep 
into into what they say as well and unpacking that that makes sense um so it's yeah a similar process to what we discussed on the marketing qualified leads from your experience and this this is a tricky one a lot of companies will invest quite heavily depending on the size of them into building these mqls they might put on 10k 20k 30k plus webinars they might create tons of content ebooks videos podcasts guides get loads of downloads and then um drive all these marketing qualified leads that are then handed off to sales. Or you could just build your own lists or pay a company to build your list and start calling those and kind of segment those into prospects you feel are a good match, depending on what you're targeting, industry, job title, the list goes on. Should you not just build lists? Would it not be cheaper? Or do, do, do MQLs from your experience tend to convert better to meeting? Or what have you seen? Marginally. Um marginally better I, I wouldn't say that it's it's uh, tremendously and i i am just for the record i'm a hardcore outbound guy so most of my experience is in that world so take for what it's worth but in my experience you know a really well functioning sdr for an enterprise meaning 100k plus deal size outbound meaning i have no clue who you were before i picked up the phone um can average around eight to 12 meetings completed held per month. If they're doing well, um, av- industry average is three held per SDR in that same scenario. So, you know, we can, we've seen teams doing eight to 12 and that might your MQL, it might be like 12 to 15. So it, it typically isn't that much better with the exceptions of, um, depending on the content, man, like the content is everything. If you have some really freaking fire content, like I sure. do think brand is everything. So I think there's value here that beyond just direct meetings that does come into play. Like if you say Nike, whether you, I don't, I don't particularly love Nike shoes, um, but I have Were respect. Were you just checking if you had someone then? <laughs> How, uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're not, they're Cole Hans. Uh, but, but, uh, you know, I know that name. Everyone knows that name because they do really great marketing, right? And they've they're a giant. But there's there's lots yeah. of places like that. Back to like Gong. You think call recording? You think Gong immediately. You don't have to think about it. But there's tons of them that do it. Course is another big one. But you don't ever think course. You think Gong. So I think that there is value to really great content marketing beyond just meetings booked. But to answer your question, I have not seen that big of a lift on average from cold outbound done properly and MQLs. Interesting. Yeah, I just wanted to stir up some marketers really with that statement. So that was the that was the thought behind it. But no, I can I, I agree. Obviously, demand gen has its place, um, especially if you're a, a larger larger scale corporation. If you're putting out quality content that's going to educate your prospects over time, you're going to build that that trust, that brand affinity. So it's only going to help and complement. It is better than team. shitty outbound, to be clear. Like if it's very uh, poor out strategy yes you will have much better conversions on mqls but this is assuming your outbound strategy is very good very tight and you have good sdrs then you know i i think it's a marginal lift but everything everything counts in this space yep just just another controversial one um who's got a harder job the the sales team that deal with inbound leads or the ones that are doing cold prospecting oh 100 the ones that are doing cold prospecting <laughs> And can uh, this might help business owners? Can a um, can a sales rep be qualified at both outbound and inbound, or is it a specific skill set for one or the other? Mm, no, I don't. Uh, so I think if you master outbound, you'll crush inbound. Period. Um, if you master inbound and that is your focus, and you try to shift an outbound, do the same things, you will fail miserably. So. It's transferable outbound to inbound, but it is not inbound to outbound. That's like the number one problem that I deal with with our customers is like Discovery Call, for example. Their AEs are like, oh, these are our best AEs, but they're their best AEs in an inbound motion. And then they get on a call with an outbound prospect and they're like banting them in the first five minutes. And I'm like, what are you doing, dude? They're here because we said we were going to show them some insight. Like this isn't going to work. And they're wondering why they don't convert to pipe. So um, if you master outbound, very transferable to inbound. There's a little bit of a a little bit of a shift, like they're further along in the buyer's journey, but it's it's all very useful things. So I do think a rep can do both, but they have to be. It does have to be a rep that's okay with context switching. Like, and I would suggest 
I would suggest like batching that out. So focus on outbound activities, then focus on inbound activities or vice versa. I wouldn't like contact switch every other lead. If you're making a hundred dials, I would focus on 50 outbound, then shift gears, 50 inbound. Like it, like it. Good way to end. Ethan, really enjoyed the conversation, sir. Thanks very much for coming on. Please do share share more about how people can learn from you, get in touch with you and, and connect with yourself, sir. Yeah, um, the best place to connect with me is LinkedIn. Um, I do. I try to put out a decent amount of content and I also have a podcast. You can check that out. So it's the Revenue Podcast. Um, it's on Apple and, I, and Spotify and all the things. So check that out if it's, if it's, uh, if it's interesting. And then if you are... If you're a sales development um, leader and you're not hitting the numbers you would like and you want to chat about it, I'm always down for a conversation around that too. So, Nice one, dude. Thanks once again. Yeah, thank and you, Sam. No worries. And as always, we'll put all of those links for Ethan's LinkedIn and site over at the website, businessgrowth.marketing. And with that, thanks very much for tuning in. As always, if you enjoy the show, a quick rating on your podcast channel is appreciated or subscribe on YouTube. And for more no BS actual marketing and sales tips, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.